Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be looking at solving equations with inverse trigonometric functions. So we've got three things that we're going to have to simplify here. We've got arc cos cos 3 pi on 2, sine of arc cos of x, and arc sine of cos of x. So let's have a go at solving these. So first off, let's start with a. We need to consider a domain in this case, because we're considering arc cos, um, and we've got to consider the domain of these inverse trig functions such that they are 1 to 1. So depending on whether you've worked with your calculator before or not, and uh, actually explored these functions in detail, you may notice if you type in cosine inverse or arc cos of 3 pi on 2, you get a domain error. And that's because we need these functions to be 1 to 1, that is, we want only one input for every given output. So, as such, arc cos has a domain of 0 to pi. Arc sine x is negative pi on 2 to pi on 2. Both of these are inclusive. Arc tan x has domain negative pi on 2 to pi on 2 exclusive to between those values. And it's really important that we remember these domains, and if you actually graph some of these functions and consider where they're 1 to 1 and on 2, then we can actually consider um, why they have these domains. Then the, for the meantime, we're just going to remember these, this problem. So as such, arc cos, cos of 3 pi on 2, we've got to find what would give us this, because obviously the arc cos and the cos would undo each other. But we can't have 3 pi on 2 because it's not part of our domain, so we've got to consider, well, what can we have? And the answer is pi on 2, because that's obviously going to be part of our domain and will fulfill that property there. Because when you consider about 3 pi on 2 and pi on 2, they're exactly directly opposite one another on the unit circle. So that's how we'd solve a problem like that. We'd see if it's in the domain, and if it isn't, we're going to have to think, well, what would be the corresponding value in that domain? So now let's have a go at something a little bit simpler, because that was a little bit tricky to get your head around, and it's probably worthwhile if you do a little bit more work on that by actually uh, having a go at looking at those functions in greater depth. Now let's have a look at something that's reasonably straightforward because we're always going to assume that's part of the domain. So let's find the sine of arc cos of x. So to begin with, um, obviously x is going to be a length and we're just going to take the inverse cosine of it, just like you normally would when you want to find the length of something. Um, so we can draw this triangle, and it's really important that when we draw this triangle we always draw the hypotenuse of length 1, like you would in a unit circle, and then from there we can use our actual uh, trigonometric functions and inverse trig functions to actually work this out. So let's start with having an angle theta, because we know we want to get the arc cos of x, obviously we can we can have theta in there, theta is some angle, because x is going to be a length that we want to take the inverse cosine of. Again, this takes a little bit of practice to understand fully why we're doing this. But uh, when we do that, obviously using Pythagoras theorem, if that side's 1, that side's x, and we're going to have square root of 1 take x squared there. Again, that's just Pythagoras theorem. And uh, we've got cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. What's the adjacent side in this case? Well, it's clearly our x, and that's why we're considering x there being adjacent to that, because we have cosine here. And we know that adjacent over hypotenuse is cosine of, of theta. So having x there makes sense right next to theta on the adjacent side, because it allows us to easily work out a, uh, actual, a, a way of actually getting arc cos x. So once we've done that, x on 1 is adjacent to hypotenuse, that simplifies down to x, and as such, cos theta equals x. And that will help us, because in the next step we can see, well, theta is going to be equal to arc cos x. When we bring the cos to the other side, it becomes arc cos, and we're just left with theta. So theta equals arc cos x, so we know that that's there. That, that term there in the brackets is, is theta. So as a result, sine of theta is equal to the sine of arc cos x. So sine of theta is equal to sine arc cos x. So all we need to do is evaluate sine of theta, and we've evaluated that expression. And you can probably see what sine of theta is going to be just by looking at that diagram. But doing it anyway, by longhand, we get sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse, which is equal to 1, uh, sorry, the square root of 1 take x squared on 1, which is obviously the square root of 1 take x squared. As such, we get the uh, uh, sine of arc cos x is equal to the square root of 1 take x squared. Lastly, arc sine cos of x, where x is equal to, uh, sorry, x belongs to 
the domain of 0 to pi on 2 inclusive, well, here we know that x we want to consider as an angle rather than considering a side because we're given something that you know, makes sense if we were to consider x as an angle. So as such, we draw a triangle and we list x as an angle. And the good thing is when we're working with angles, we'll keep the hypotenuse equal to 1 because that will simplify calculations. Again, that's because we generally consider these on a unit circle, and a unit circle has a radius of 1. But uh, we've got x, we've got our 90 degree angle there, which is pi on 2 radians, and up the top we're going to have 90 take x, or pi on 2 take x. So what we can actually see here is this identity, and you should have come across this before. Um, if not, we'll have a look at it now, but this is an identity you should know, and it's used to solve many trig things. But if we have a look at cosine of x, that's obviously equal to the adjacent side, right? We take the cosine of x, the adjacent on hypotenuse, oh, sorry, adjacent on hypotenuse, wow, didn't know I had that accent. But um, as we can see, adjacent on 1 is going to be adjacent. And if we take the sine of 90 on x, that's opposite side to that 90 on x angle, which is the adjacent side, we divide that by 1, we also get adjacent. So those two are equal. As a consequence, we can say, well, we have arc sine cos of x. Well, it's the same as arc sine sine of 90 take x using this here, and that's 90 degrees. So what we end up, arc sine sine, they just disappear, and we're left with 90 degrees take x as being our answer. So remember, in this case, we got degrees as our answer, again, because we're looking at angles in the actual question here. X is an angle, it's no longer a side like it was up here, which is something very important to note. And as a consequence we get, um, we can also write this as pi on 2 radians take x because 90 is equal to pi on 2 radians. So hopefully these uh, questions were pretty good to give you a basic understanding of how to solve these sorts of problems. Again, just consider is there a domain given, is there sides that we need to work with, or what are the domains of our inverse trig functions, and you should be able to answer problems like these. Again, it does require practice though, and I recommend that you have a look at some of these functions in detail before you start playing around with them. So, that was just a quick video. Let me know if it's helpful. Leave any comments below. Thank you.